Hey everyone, this is Rita. Welcome to part six of our eight part Sweat With Self yoga series. Not to worry if you haven't checked out the other videos, you can watch them at any time in any order. If you've got your props nearby, definitely recommend you grab them. If you're doing DIY props, old dictionaries, repurposed textbooks, any old towels or blankets that you've got can always be helpful. Today we're gonna do some shoulder opening. Let's jump in and start seated. So I invite you to sit the way that I am in a Virasana. I've got one block on its middle height, right between the inner ankle bones. You could take one block on its lowest height, um, like so. You could also take two blocks stacked on their lowest height. And I'm gonna turn to face you, but you can just face the front of your mat. Once you settle, the knees are together, the heels are on either side of the block with the inner ankle bones meeting the block, toenail side of the foot down, Lift up one kneecap at a time, stretch the skin of your shins long, and just bring the palms to rest, face up or face down on the thighs, or you can spoon the palms one on top of the other with the thumbs lightly touching. I like the non-dominant hand on top. Take a moment to arrive, just settle in. You can let your gaze descend down toward the ground Vision softens as you invite the quality of water to the eyeballs. The eyelids can close on their own at any point. And just notice how the lower body makes contact with the block. See if you're tipped really far forward. See if you're tipped really far back with the tail underneath you and find the center. So that way the perineum, which is between the sit bones, the buttock bones, the pubic bone, and the tailbone, right at the center of the base of the pelvic bowl is making good contact. Smooth out the skin of your forehead. Soften the temples. Relax your cheeks. Let your jaw be heavy. And the tongue just lands in the basket of your mouth. Collarbones are broad as the blades just settle down the back. The belly is soft. The whole front of the body soft. The spine integrated and supporting you. And see if you can propriocept where the skull is in space and balance it perfectly atop the spine. So for me, I just gently send the back of the skull back in space ever so slightly. And take a big breath in through your nose. Sigh out the mouth. Breathe in again through the nose. Sigh out the mouth. Inhale through the nose. Out the mouth. As you breathe in, imagine that you could expand up and down simultaneously. And as you breathe out, come back to the center. Inhale, expand forward and back. Exhale, come to the middle. Breathe in, expand left and right, east and west. Exhale, come back to the center. Now breathe in and expand 360 degrees in every direction. Exhale, you find the center. Inhale, radiate outward to the edges of your own circumference. Exhale, find the center of center of you. Breathe in, expand in every direction. Exhale, you return to the concentrated point of radiance within. One more, radiate outward in every direction. Take up lots of space. 
Exhale, you find the middle. Let that go and gently reflutter your eyelids back open. Take a breath in and interlace your hands in front of you. And as you exhale, press the palms away and round your spine. Now breathe in and take the arms up over your head. We'll do some shoulder flossing here. So make sure that the hands are interlaced very well, especially at the pinkies. Just begin to bend the elbows. Keep your palms facing up the whole time and circle the palms around behind your head over to the left now. The palms face up the whole time. So just like we floss for good dental hygiene, or we're supposed to, we floss our shoulders for good neck and shoulder health. And just take it around a few times. If you start to feel lots of heat, that's a good indicator that what you're doing is working. Try not to tip your head too far forward. Keep everything in line and take your circles around a few times the other way. Let's say four more. Yeah, just notice all the sensation and everything that's happening. All the gunk that you can move out. Press it up as you breathe in and release the arms as you breathe out. Okay, opposite interlace of the hands this time as you inhale and then exhale, press the palms away from you. So this is definitely the weird interlace of the hands, the unfamiliar one, round, round, round the spine. And then breathe in and take it all the way up over your head. Keep the interlace of the palms, especially at the pinkies. They definitely want to like flare out to the sides and begin to circle it a few times. It is so hot in these shoulders. So get everything out. A few more the other way. You got it. What you're doing is working. Keep your head level with the spine. Last two. Last one. Big breath in. And release. <sighs> Take a moment. Let the hands rest back on the thighs. Maybe the eyes close. And just feel the sensation of moving everything around. And waking up what might have been sleeping and dormant in there. Okay, move your block off to the side if you had one, and we'll meet on hands and knees. On your hands and knees, keep your fingers pointing forward. Knees are underneath your hips, tops of the feet are down into the mat. The wrists stack underneath the shoulders, and just a few times arc and round your spine. You can listen to your breath. Inhale as you arc the spine and look out. Exhale to round everything in. A couple times. Okay, now here, we're going to interlace our hands on the mat. So just like you did, press the interlaced palms into the mat and put sufficient weight in the pinky edge. So if your shoulders are way back, um, like where your hips are, that'll make it a little bit easier. But do try to keep everything aligned and stack the shoulders over the wrists. And then a few times, just arc and round. And you can speed these up. Keep pressing into the tops of your feet. Keep putting more weight over the center of the wrists. By neutral. And then from here, flip your palms so that way you've got an open face sandwich and put more weight into the thumb side of the hand so the shoulders level over the wrist here and just move it around. You can swirl the hips in circles, get any movements that you can. You can take your circles the other way. Might be a wiring of new neurology in the mind if you're used to only moving in one direction and only doing things one way. I used to make this really lame joke that one direction didn't work and that's why the band broke up. I assume you're laughing behind the screen. Okay, and then from here, one more time, flip the palms away from you. I know it seems really counterintuitive. So you have this heart shape and to make it easier, you could have the hands back closer to the knees to make it a little bit more challenging. You could move the hands so they stack more underneath the shoulders. This is a really nice way to open up the forearms. You can just pulse it forward and back. Great to undo all of the usual wrist activities that we do in our modern way of being. And just take any movements that you can and see what happens in the wrist. 
And the movements might not be very big. They may feel kind of unnatural, but it's just an exploration. Okay. Release the hands, un unlace them, and press your palms into the mat. Just ground them really well. From here, tuck your toes, find downward facing. Take any movements that you want with your dog pose. Bend one knee, bend the other knee. Send a hip to one side, lift a leg, lift an arm. Take a movement that you haven't taken before. Lots of options. And then settle your dog pose. Feet are hip width, hands are shoulder width. Middle fingers are parallel to one another, pointing toward the front edge of the mat. Knees have a healthy bend. Tailbone goes way, way high and up toward the crease where the wall meets the ceiling. Ears stay in line with the bicep, so the torso is lengthened and light. And then come forward, check your measure to a plank pose, and take it back downward facing. From here, breathe in, lift your right leg. Step your right foot outside of your right hand. Sweep your right arm forward, around and up. And as you exhale, take it back inside of the right leg, straighten and fold, wide pyramid pose. Stay here for a moment. You can let your head go. You could have your hands on blocks. And here, the hips will really want to wing over to the right. See if you can bring the hips to the left even more. And you could have your back heel lifted. You could also spin your back heel down. It's totally up to you. But keep sending the left butt to its own side. From here, if you had the back heel down, pop it back up again. We'll meet in a wide lunge. Sweep the right arm forward, around and up. Exhale, straighten and fold. Like that again, breathe in forward, around and up. Exhale, wide pyramid pose. Inhale, sweep the arm, follow it. Exhale, wide pyramid pose. From here, just bend your right knee. I like to be up on the finger tops and step your left foot outside of your left hand so you land in a squat. From here, breathe in, straighten legs, reach the arms up, stand up. Exhale as you heel toe your feet together, Tadasana Mountain Pose. Inhale, reverse swan, the arms up. Exhale, hands through the center as you fold down. Breathe in, step the right foot back on the mat. Breathe out, the left foot steps back downward facing. Inhale, come forward to a plank and just lower all the way down onto the mat. Once you get there, slide your fingertips out wide. Lengthen one leg and then the other. Press the tops of the feet into the mat and tent your fingertips so the elbows point straight up in the air. As you breathe in, lift your chest up. As you exhale, the right shoulder dips down. Turn your right cheek toward the ground. Breathe in, come through the middle. Exhale, left shoulder dips down. Turn your cheek to the left. Inhale through the center. Exhale, right dips through the middle. Left dips. Last one, center. Right dips. Center. Left dips. Breathe in to find the middle. Exhale, lower down. Hands frame your rib cage now. Inhale, baby cobra. Exhale, pass through all fours and take it back to downward facing. From your down dog, breathe in, lift your left leg. Exhale, step the left foot outside of your left hand. Breathe in, sweep your left arm forward, around and up. Exhale, left hand inside of the left foot as you straighten and fold for a wide pyramid pose. Option to keep the back heel lifted or spin the back heel down. You could also have your hands on blocks. And now if your bum is swinging way out to the left side of the mat, move it back in line and send your hips all the way to the right. So the right butt goes to its own side. Let your head go. Both hands come down onto the mat or fingertops. If the right heel was down, lift it up again for this wide lunge. Left arm forward, around and up. Exhale, straighten, fold inside of the left leg. Breathe in, bend the knee, swim the arm. 
Exhale, straight and fold. Inhale, bend the knee, swim the arm. Exhale, straight and fold. Last one, breathe in, bend the knee, swim the arm. Exhale, straight and fold. Keep the hands down, bend your left knee, get light on the back foot. The right foot steps outside of the right hand. We meet in a wide squat. Press the elbows into the knees so that way you broaden the collarbones and lift your butt up just an inch higher than you normally would. Inhale, straight legs, reach the arms up, look up, exhale, heel toe, the feet together as you land back in a Tadasana, a mountain pose. Inhale, reach the arms up, Ardva Hastasana, and look up. Exhale, hands through the center as you fold back down over your legs. Breathe in halfway up. Exhale, the left foot steps back. The right foot steps back to a dog pose, and you take it forward to plank, lower down all the way to your belly. And once you get here, cactus your arms out, so that way you've got a 90 degree angle at the shoulder and at the elbow. So the wrist is in the same line as the elbow. Your forehead can be straight down. And then from here, place your left hand by your left rib cage and begin to peel the chest open. So press into the left hand to peel the chest open. Your right cheek will land on the mat. The left leg will stack on top of the right one first. And then maybe you step the left foot back behind you. You could place a block underneath your head. If you've got a forward head posture going on here like I do, just adjust your skull back in space. Send lots of breath into the front pec muscles. Keep dragging the shoulder blade down the back. Okay, come back to the middle. Adjust so that way your head is not off the mat. Come back, cactus arms with both sides. The right hand is outside of the, of the right side of the rib cage. Press into the right hand to peel the chest open. Left cheek is down. The right foot can float in the air or maybe you bend the knee and the right foot touches down behind you. 90 degree angle, in the left elbow, the wrist is in line, adjust your head if you need to. And send lots of breath into the space of the front pec muscle. And keep drawing the shoulder blade down the back. Come back through the center. Left hand frames the rib cage now, so both hands are like a baby cobra. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, lower down. This time, breathe in, lift up. Now exhale all the air out of your mouth as you lower. Okay, one more time, like you really mean it. Breathe in, baby cobra, look out. Exhale all the air out of your mouth as you lower. <sighs> Stay empty. Tuck your toes, kneecaps, lift, thighs, lift, press into your hands and feet. Rise up to the top of a plank pose, the whole body in one unit. When you need the breath in, you take it. Exhale, downward facing. Really nice. And then from here, you can either walk or jump or float your feet forward to the top of the mat. We'll meet in a fold at the top of the mat. And once you arrive, you choose feet hip width or together and interlace your hands to the webbing behind your back and pull the hands away from you. Maybe you bring the heels of the hands together. You could even Find a gentle twist to one side and the other. You can rock the weight forward and back in the feet. Take another breath in. And as you breathe out, release the hands down. Stay in your fold. 
and just tighten up the feet so that way the inner edges of the feet are together. Put a little bit of a bend in your knees. Interlace your hands to the webbing again and place your hands down on the mat. Very fun thing. The thumbs will fit the pinky toes. So your feet together are the same distance as your hands interlaced. And once you've got that, just bend your knees and find a little squat. From your squat, um, you can release the hands for a moment and just widen the knees out. Fingertips can be down. We'll take a malasana or a garland pose. So really important that the inner edges of the feet stay together, like the inner ankle bones. So you can stay here on fingertips, round the spine. You could bring your forearms down. Again, spine is super round, head is heavy. Or you could interlace your hands and catch the heels in the cups of your hands. So that way the hands are supporting the heels. Imagine the breath filling up the back of the body. The space behind the lungs, the space of the low back. And really use the hands to support the heels if they feel like they're dragging down. Okay. If you had the hands around the feet, release that. If you had forearms, come back onto fingertips. Bring the knees together. Forward fold. And bone by bone, or you could hinge at the hip, make your way to stand. We'll just meet standing in Tadasana, mountain pose with the arms by your side. Gaze ahead of you. Maybe let the eyes settle closed. From here, you choose if you want the feet together or hip width distance. I'm going to bring my feet together. Breathe in, bend your knees, and sweep your arms up chair pose. Exhale, fold down over your legs. Inhale, interlace the hands behind you, bend the knees, and look out like a skier. Exhale, fold down. Breathe in like a skier. Exhale to fold. Release the hands. Lift up halfway. Exhale, you step or float. Back bend on the breath in. Downward facing on the breath out. From your down dog, inhale, lift your right leg. Step your right foot outside of your right hand. Spin the left heel down. So the right foot's on its own side of the mat. The left foot is on its own side of the mat. The legs are really strong, healthy bend of the right knee. So you've got a 90 degree angle in the knee. Reach the arms up, warrior one. Everyone's favorite. Find the strength of the legs to give you the capacity and the availability for lightness through the upper body. Take a breath in. And as you breathe out, release the hands behind the back. Interlace them and lift the chest up. Look up as you breathe in. Exhale, bow, humble warrior. Right shoulder just snuggles inside of the right knee and send your hips off to the left. I know the butt wants to go to its own side on the right. Keep using the back leg and send your bum to the left. Maybe bring the heels of the hands together. Release the hands inside of the right leg, straight in the right leg, wide pyramid pose. You can lift the back heel up if you'd like. Bow your head. And then get light on the back foot and float all the way forward, standing split, left heel lifts high. If you've got your blocks, you could have your hands on blocks here. And then wherever your hands are, see if you can bring the hands to the chest. We've got a little balancing act for you. Draw the knee into the chest as you lift the whole torso up to stand. The left knee draws high and up. 
and then bring the left foot, the sole of the left foot to the right thigh for tree pose. And in your tree pose for today, I invite you to interlace the hands behind the back. The thumbs go straight up into the shoulder blades. I like pointing straight up. So you could take the hands like this. If this is a challenging option, you can always hold on to opposite elbow behind your back. Or if you want to try another variation, you can find a secret prayer, or reverse prayer behind your back. And if you're taking a reverse prayer, really fight to find the index finger knuckles meeting one another, the elbows wing out to the side, the collarbones are broad, and the gaze is soft. Breathe in and breathe out. Okay, release what you were doing with the hands, draw the left knee into the chest, and just place the left foot down. If you used the blocks last time, you can just keep them there. We'll take the other side now. Breathe in, bend your knees, chair pose, sweep the arms up. Exhale, you fold down over your legs. Opposite interlace of the hands, bend the knees, gears pose, fist back, chest forward. As you exhale, fold over your legs. Breathe in like a skier and look out. Bend knees, chest forward, fist back. Exhale to fold. One more, breathe in. And breathe out. Release the hands down, lift up halfway. As you exhale, step or float. Lower halfway down. The breath in is a back bend and the breath out is downward facing. From your down dog, inhale, lift the left leg. Step the left foot outside of the left hand. Spin the right heel down. Left foot is on its own side. Right foot is on its own side. Get set up really well. Right butt to its own side. And then lift the chest as so you unfurl warrior one. Keep using the back leg as your anchor. Strengthen the legs. Maybe the gaze begins to soften. Bend the left knee deeper. Take a breath in. And as you breathe out, hands clasp behind you, opposite index on top, breathe in. Pull the fist away and look up. Exhale, you bow, humble warrior. Left shoulder inside of the left knee. If your butt's going out to the left, send the whole lower body, the hips over to the right. Let your head go. Release the hands. Straighten the front leg. Wide pyramid pose. Maybe you lift the back heel up. Up to you. Okay, from here, if the back heel is down, lift it up. Get light on the back foot. Maybe you grab your blocks, float all the way forward, standing split. Right heel is lifted. Heel up, head down. And then balancing act. Bring your hands together to a prayer at the chest and begin to draw the right knee into the chest as you lift the whole torso up to stand. Draw the right knee in tightly. And then you can use the hands to place your right foot on the left thigh. You could also place the foot at the ankle or the shin, recommended not at the knee, and then any arm variation you took on the other side. So that could be holding onto opposite elbow behind your back. That could be the opposite index finger on top with the th thumbs alongside the shoulder blades, or that could be a secret prayer. And take your time to find it. If you're going for a secret prayer, the index finger knuckles fight to find one another. Elbows wing out to the side. Broad collarbones. Breath moves freely. Release the hands. Draw the right knee into the chest. And just place the right foot down. Any way that you'd like. If you want to take one more vinyasa, you can. Any rinse, 
maybe a cat and a cow, but we'll meet in a dog pose. And then from your dog pose, touch your knees down onto the mat and just find a meditative seat like we started class. One or two blocks underneath your bum. You could take a Sukhasana, an easy seat crisscross applesauce if you prefer instead and let the hands come back on the thighs. Take a moment in stillness. Bring your attention back to the breath, radiating outward and drawing back in. Expansive in every direction on the inhalation, back to the concentrated point of radiance within you on the exhalation. Quietly remove the block from underneath you. We'll meet lying on the belly. Once you get there, place your elbows underneath your shoulders and take a sphinx pose. So really press into the elbows and the palms to lift the chest up. Lengthen through the legs and the feet. Think that you could scrub the sacrum down. And then from here, we'll do a bow pose prep on each side. So take your right arm, right forearm at a 45 degree angle. Bend your left heel in toward your left butt. Reach the left arm around to grab hold of the left foot. And you can bring the left foot in any amount. Maybe you flip the palm if that's okay. And I'm sure the left hip point wants to come up a lot. So see how you can bring the left hip point back down to the mat and your gaze forward. We'll do the same thing on the other side now. So come back through a Sphinx pose. The left forearm will take a 45 degree angle, bend the right knee, right hand comes around to grab the right foot and you bring the right foot in toward your right butt. Maybe you flip the palm around, right hip point tries to draw down. Okay, release the hand, release the foot. Both hands come onto the mat. You can make a little pillow. Just take your forehead down onto your pillow for a moment. Wiggle your hips a little bit from left to right. From here, we'll take a full bow pose. So bend both of your knees. And you can hold on to the outer edges of your feet. I prefer to hold on to the ankles and flex the feet. And then when you're ready, press the ankles and press the feet into the hands so much that the torso lifts up. That's it. Keep pulling the feet back in space. Keep pulling the feet back in space away from you. And if the knees are going out really wide, keep them drawn in toward the midline so everything's only hip width distance apart. And look out and catch your breath. And release slowly. Lower down. Release the feet. Hands come back. Opposite palm on top. You could take one cheek to the pillow that you've made and just a gentle wiggle of the hips left and right on the mat. One more time, bow pose. I know, you could stay in that pillow forever. Bend your knees in, the heels come toward your bum, reach your hands around. Grab hold of the outer edges of the feet. Maybe grab hold of the ankles this time. Whatever variation you did last time, do the other one. And then press the feet or the ankles into the hands so much that you lift the torso up. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. 
that's it. Maybe you get a little more rise. You could rock a little bit back and forth and then release everything down. Other cheek comes to the pillow you've made with your palms. Take a moment of rest. From here, just turn onto your back for Shavasana. And if you've got your blocks, one option for today is to place them underneath the calf muscles, lowest height, right next to one another, so the legs are slightly elevated, and just make your way down. Let everything go. Let the back body just melt into the mat. important to allow yourself the time to rest and process and integrate the experience that's just happened. Stay here as long as you'd like. Absolutely no rush. If you're moving with me, be careful of any props. And just gently begin to make your way out of it. We'll meet in a seat. Once you're seated, flip your palms up on your knees and connect the index finger and thumb together so you're a closed circuit, one continuous energetic loop. The top of the inhale feeds the exhale and the bottom of the exhale gives rise to the next breath. You can bring your hands together, bow your chin. Namaste. Thank you so, so much for joining me. This is Rita. Remember, this was part six of our eight part series. Would love to have you join for practice in another video. We'll see you soon.